All right, guys. Good evening. Yeah, it is evening for everybody here, I think. Yep. So good evening. Um, so tonight we're going to look at how to become more consistent and, you know, then to, you know, release your training potential. So it's been recorded for, for the folks that can't make it tonight, and then I'll stop the recording just before we go into any question and answer sessions at the end. So I picked up a couple of quotes here, which which I thought was quite quite useful. Um, the one on the right hand side is is my current Facebook profile picture because I just really like that. Um, you know, success is never owned; it is rented, and the rent is due every day, uh, which is so true when we're looking at a topic of being consistent. And then there's one there from Arsene Wenger, and one there from Robert Collier as well. <clears throat> so when you look at people who are successful you will find that they aren't the people who are motivated, but have consistency in their motivation. It took me a few minutes to get my head around that one, but if you think about it, 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 it does make sense. Uh, and then success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out, which is a lot, you know, that's probably more relevant out of, out of the, the two quotes on the left for what we do. We need to constantly chip away and, and do small efforts to improve our triathlon performance over, over a period of time. So, so why are we looking to be consistent uh, in our training? Firstly, it's, it's the foundation of, of, of a base endurance, of base endurance basically comes through consistency in training. Um, you know, having a solid base, you know, gives, gives you the platform to become faster, stronger, and ultimately have, and be less likely to become injured because you've got that solid base and you've, you've been consistently through that, that, that winter build phase or base phase. So building good habits around your training is likely, uh, is likely the number one factor that we see, I suppose, as coaches in the overall successful athletes, you know, the, the ones that, are, that, that you know, stay injury free or predominantly injury free and have a good season are the ones that are green across the board week in, week out on training picks. Um, so, you know, how do we, how do we get con consistency in our training? You know, we, we need to plan ahead. So if anybody have ever heard of the seven Ps, um, planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. And that's pretty much what, what we're talking about planning here is, you know, on a scene Sunday evening, you know, look at your schedule for the next week. You know what what's in the training plan what's in your social plan what's in your work diary and work out you know where where the sessions will go you know do you need to move any sessions you know if you've got a a 5 30 or 6 p.m meeting with the boss that's that's likely to run on there's no point in you know having in your mind that there's going to be a a two and a half hour or an hour and a half turbo on on that night you know so be sensible about what what you try and fit into a day um, you know, if you want a plan, you know, Steve's would have put all the, the workouts in particular places during the week. So you have adequate recovery between hard sessions. So again, if you're going to move, move workouts around, you know, during that week, just be mindful of recovery periods, you know, two and two back to back hard turbos isn't ideal, um, you know, or doing, you know, a hard hard uh, effort or uh, run effort, you know, tempos or VO2, and then the next day having your long run session. And again, you know, by moving stuff in the week and, you know, maybe cramming towards the weekend, again, you're just overloading your system, you know, you start to push everything, you know, towards the weekend. Um, plan your nutritional needs as well for the week. Um, you know, if you're gonna be doing a lot of, you know, the, the sessions, you know, throughout the week. So have a think about, you know, when potentially you need more carbs for the, for that particular day, looking at your training load the next day. So it's all part of the, the planning process, the process for, for the week. Pool times, especially this time of year, you know, we're getting into the holiday period. A lot of public pools and, you know, private pools will, will close over this period. So again, you know, looking at your schedule, what days you can actually get to the pool uh, that you're actually going to be able to swim um, without the lanes being rammed and, you know, move your training around accordingly so you can try and get your three swims in a week. And, you know, 
last but certainly not least, there's family commitments and, and other events. You know, the, the endurance training world is is so reliant on on family and and friends to you know to to help or accommodate or to have the understanding that you know what you have to try and get done in a week, and also you know meet the other commitments that that we all have. And it's useful to you know to add you know birthdays whatever other social events you have to training big. So, you know, when you're looking at your week ahead, you've got a, a sense of, well, look, I'm not going to get my two sessions in on Thursday because I'm, I'm going out with the wife for, for date night, whatever that may be, you know, so, you know, plan that and have that in your, in your calendar. So you've got that single source of truth to look at uh, every week. Early sessions, so um, I use this comment quite a lot. Um, you know, there are two five o'clocks in every day. Um, it's, it's more of a joke than, than being serious. Um, but uh, you know, early sessions are, are typically, they're in your sole control over your day. Um, you, know, you know, if you can get a session done where you know you're not gonna have any distractions or any disruptions, or it's very difficult for work to, impinge on that time, then it's a good opportunity to get an early session done, early doors, get it done. You know, there's no meetings or no emergencies gonna, gonna prevent you doing that. Um, and look, let's face it, right? You get an early session done, you come out the pool or come finish a run or whatever it is, and you feel awesome. And you know, you've got that smug look on your face pretty much all day, because you know you've got session in the bank, have a good breakfast afterwards and you're set up for the day. Now, obviously, you know, shift workers you know, you know, will have a completely different challenge, um, but the ethos is really still the same. You know, plan, plan your workouts around the time you can control, not the time you can't control. Try and identify triggers. You know, we all have things, triggers or red flags that will, will go on and will stop you doing a session. Um, you know, one of my triggers is, is after a long week, having maybe two glasses of red wine on a Sunday night rather than, than one. And that means Monday morning S&C session doesn't happen. Uh -huh. And then that puts me on the back foot for the rest of the week because I find it really difficult to fit that, that session in. So, you know, identify triggers, you know, maybe a, maybe a Wednesday meeting in work that always runs on, it's always late. So again, that's, that's another red flag or a trigger that you want to work around. Um, you know, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. I think that's the definition of insanity. I can't remember whose quote that was. Um, but, you know, if you, if you repeatedly plan for the same workout every week, and it doesn't happen or it's delayed or it, you have to cut it short because of a, for the same reason every week, you know, that's, that's one you need to, to move or try and work around or do it early or, or whatever you have to do to get that one in. You know, looking at the, the weather for the week as well, uh, we we're chatting earlier there, Kenny and I are just around, you know, how the weather's changed and we've got, you know, here in Belfast, we've got minus three and, and Kenny there in North Carolina has got minus three. You know, so looking at that weather for the for the week, uh, and you know, working out how you're going to get your training. You know, runs may no longer be runs outside. There may be a gym and a treadmill, unfortunately. So it's planning around around what that weather is going to do to your training session. You know, there's little point going out and getting cold and wet. Um, you know, this is going to be a recipe for illness. Um, so try try and avoid getting wet and cold, um, you know, either or is, is okay, uh, but both are, of a combination uh, will likely cause to a sniffle or a cold or something. So try and avoid that and like I say, plan around that. Um, and likewise for doing, you know, doing hard sessions when we're not feeling 100%, it's really not a good idea. So again, you've got to plan, plan around that when you start to feel a little bit, yeah, not, you know, not quite 100%. Maybe the next day you've got a VO2 session, move it, you know, move it to another day or, you know, um, dial down the intensity a little bit because what you don't want to do is, is, you know, nail that prescribed session, which is great. 
great tick in the box. And then you spend the next two or three days out uh, because you've just pushed yourself too hard when you when you weren't feeling 100%. Um, and look, we all get, you know, this is, we're all into, you know, getting green across the board, right? It's very addictive. Training Peaks has a habit of just making you do every session because you want to be green. You don't want any red ones in there. Um, so, but also what that leads to as well, potentially is, you know, you, you really start to see great improvements and you want those improvements to continue. So if you're not careful, what can ha end up happening is then you, you really start to smash every single session. And what I mean by that is you're completely ignoring the, the uh, prescribed zones that, that Steve's got in the, in the training plans and you're hitting everyone really hard. So your easy run then turns out to a zone three or a tempo run. You're not doing any of the easy sessions um, because you think you're going to get, you know, quicker and quicker, better or better, quicker, quicker, better even. Um, you know, so what we don't want to do is, you know, get into that mindset where everything has to be full on because ultimately what will happen is you'll break, you know, you will get injured or you'll become ill. So again, we've got to really look around, you know, these things um, by doing the the easier recovery workouts will mean you will be, you will be able to maintain consistency. Smashing every workout will then lead to being inconsistent and you will get fit and you will get better by doing the recovery runs that they're, they're so, they're so needed uh, to give your body that, that adaptation to the training load that, that's being prescribed. Yeah, so no point in overreaching and having to miss the next sessions due to fatigue. Yeah, because you're going to get a red block in training peaks. Therefore, you're starting to lose that consistency that we're that we're aiming for. You know, easy session should be easy. Um, there's no two ways about it. Um, you know, you should be chatting along with your mates, listening to music or whatever. But you know, never out of zone two on an easy session. They should be, you know, easy. And likewise, hard sessions need to be hard. You know, there's no point in training in the in the no man's land in, in in the comfort zone because you know very little grows there. You will make some small improvements, but you will never make big big leap, big leap forward uh, in your in your training. Um, um, one thing I haven't got on the slides here actually was you know around we spoke about it briefly there, but you know training for endurance um, sports, you know, as we all know, takes in, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of planning and you need to have that, that support, you know, family and friends, like I said, at the start, um, definitely partners, you know, um, so key to, to their understanding that, you know, every Saturday and Sunday morning, you're going to be out knocking out three or four hours uh, outside training. So getting that buy-in early and, you know, having that rationale, or for them understanding why you're doing this, you know, it's a great way of life, a great way to keep fit and, and mentally, mentally or great mental release from other stresses you have. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, you know, how, what I would see as, you know, some sound ideas and, you know, to maintain consistency throughout, throughout the year. So what's next? So next we have questions. I'll turn my video off.